Hey, I know you guys don't do podcasts, but I keep getting emails from people who want to take our podcast to TikTok. What? Yeah. And lots of them, like they're coming out of the way, hey, I noticed your podcast isn't on TikTok. And my first thought is, great. Thanks for the report. Now go away. <laughs> my car's not in my kitchen as well. What, what yes. Are- <laughs> That's what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah. Hey, guys. How's it going this week? Good. good. How you doing, Carl? Good. How are you? Pretty good. How was your robotics conference competition? Robotics. Uh, it's good. I think they're going to take over the world, uh, the robots. Uh, yeah, but how was yours? Oh, it was good. No, it was fantastic. Uh, the kid. Oh, he was talking about his. Were you subjugated? Yeah. No, no, no. <laughs> no, it was fantastic. The kids did a fantastic job. Uh, at one point, we were, we were as high as fourth, and then uh, we we drove maybe a little bit aggressively and got disqualified, but that's okay. There's a, a new thing now, robot wrestling. I know you've had battle bots before. Yeah. But these are like wrestling robots. They look like little transformers, like rock'em, sock'em oh robot my God. things. That's cool. And they get under each other and flip each other over and stuff. Wow. Well, I think yeah. Dwayne's they- been practicing that during the other <laughs> I have. I have. Yeah, pretty much. Pretty much. It's been going uh, It's been going well. They actually had battle bots there too. Really? Um, which is cool. There was a battle bots team that showed up. Um, showed off their robots. Those things are crazy. I think they should just randomly mix battle bots in with first. <laughs> that would make it very exciting. Right. Pat Patrick was at this meeting. It was a regional directors meeting, maybe in Los Angeles or something. You know what I'm going to talk about, right? Jonathan Goodyear comes out with a battle bot that he had made, right? And he puts it in the middle of the floor and he pushes a button and nothing happens. He pushes another button and nothing happens. And then John Alexander pipes up. Hey, Uncle Owen, this droid unit's got a bad motivator. (laughs) (laughs) Ah, That's awesome. Funniest, most appropriate callback I've ever heard. I don't know if if the guy with the drone, with the the thing was uh, very pleased with it, though. No, he wasn't. He wasn't happy about it. (laughs) That's awesome. All right. So we have a lot of stories. Who's going to take the first one? Tesla. Tesla. Um, I will. You know, it's interesting. We we had talked about IoT recently, mm-hmm. uh, and Internet of Things, or some people call it the IOC, the Internet of Crap. But it really <laughs> depends. Like stuff you stuff you connect to the internet, like your TV and your coffee maker and your refrigerator and that sort of stuff. Well, your Tesla. There's also a lot of Tesla owners. Those cars are connected to the internet all the time, um, and they're actually VPNed back into Tesla headquarters to give them. Um, diagnostic data and all sorts of other stuff. Well, the other thing it gives is uh, apparently sensitive recorded images of you around your car. Yeah. Um, yeah, which is, you know, from a privacy standpoint, it's interesting because, you know, they, they, they say the images are only used in an anonymous way. However, they also yes. have geolocation on exactly where the image came from. So if it's right. from inside my garage, it's not very anonymous anymore. Um, yep. secondly, they can see inside of private homes. Right, so you're in your garage. Okay, wait a minute. What? Oh, in, in from your garage. Okay, yeah. Yeah. So you can see all sorts of stuff there. Here's the summary: private camera recordings captured by cars were shared in chat rooms. Circulated clips included one of child being hit by a car. Ex employees. I guess that's the source. Tesla says recordings made by vehicle cameras, quote unquote, remain anonymous. Yeah, although I think they can be tied to people. There was they said there was one video of some dude walking up to his Tesla completely naked. My guess is they probably could identify him. I'm thinking it was San Francisco. <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> well, saying. so how uh, the problem is this is like don't you don't want to know how the sausage is made. Right. Yeah. If you want to keep eating sausage, don't 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 try to find out how it's made. Um if you have a home uh, assistant whether it's, you know, Google or, or Amazon or whatever that's voice activated, it's recording all the time. Mm-hmm. Yes, but it's not. I, I know the story about this. The uh, Alexa, anyway. Yeah. Yeah, it could be, but here's the story. Alexa, you can go to Amazon and there's a place where you can listen to all the recordings that it's made of you. It doesn't, apparently it doesn't record anything until it hears the wake up and then it has a buffer like a back buffer so it can take the last five seconds or whatever from from when you started with the keyword and then uh, also there's a little bit of time after like the 
And by the way, it's infuriating. I mean, you know, what's the weather today? And here's the weather. By the way, did you know that I could send you 400 pounds of navel oranges if you just say, send me oranges? Yes. Like, yes. no, I don't want to know that. Shut up. <laughs> but, Alexa, thanks. shut the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> ours, ours complimented my wife for being so polite because I'm yeah. not wow. polite to it. I know. Alexa, shut up. <laughs> In the uprising, Patrick, you go first. Yes. So what I was saying is there's a place on Amazon where you can go and listen to all of the things that it's recorded and you can delete them. And you can also just say to Alexa, Alexa, delete all the recordings from today or delete all the recordings you have. And it will. That resulted from when it first came out, there was lots of concern. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then a month went by and then yeah. Amazon said, this is how we deal with it. Right. And I'm pretty sure that before that, there was a pool of these videos, <laughs> yeah, these sure. audios going oh, yeah. around. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. so we're, we're, it's a maturity model. Sure. You, when you get this kind of data, you can think about it ahead of time like Amazon did eventually, mm. or you can wait until something like this happens. So Tesla's going to have to go through this maturity model right. or not, depending on how, you know, how much they care. Yeah. All right. Well, we have a lot of stories. There's not really anything you can do about that. So we'll move on to the next one. Just don't walk around your Tesla naked. Yeah, right. Unless you're into that kind of thing. Or do. I don't know. It's up uh, to you. Just know yeah. that you're on candid camera. <laughs> so what about that cobalt strike? Yeah. What is, I, I remember cobalt strike. I'm, you told me what it was once, but it sounds like a game, but it's not. It pretty much is. Oh, I mean, all okay. of this cybersecurity <laughs> is a game. No, honestly. It's a game where everyone loses. <laughs> right. So we talk a lot about, you know, um, when when hackers break into organizations, they usually do it with a framework of some sort or what we call a C2, command and control structure. Right. So Cobalt Strike is a C2. Now, it was designed for cybersecurity professionals to use it in a quote unquote adversary simulation or red right. team engagement to breach an organization. So it does lateral movement and, and, um, herpa derping and, and, you know, uh, beaconing through DNS and all sorts of weird stuff. Are you just making shit up now? Herpa derping? <laughs> I think he just called you a horrible name and I wouldn't take it if I were you. I know. What did you call me? What? Herpa derp. What is that? Herpa derp process hollowing. <laughs> um, <laughs> still don't so know what that is. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Herpa derping is fergie lacking. It's when time dilates behind the moon. Now, do you get it? Yeah. Does it make sense now? Okay. What are you, stupid? Uh, and on that note, uh, so needless to say, it, because it's it's such a really good and easy tool for once you break into an organization for staying in that organization and laterally moving around and controlling right. things and that sort of stuff, obviously... The real bad guys were like, well, we should be able to use it too. Yeah. Um, so they did. Um, and now a lot of really large and even nation states use cracked copies of Cobalt Strike um, to attack legitimate organizations and deploy ransomware. Wow. Which is ironic because we couldn't buy a copy of this. Yes. Yeah, so this started out as a tool that guys like you would use to protect. Uh, yep. Yeah. To do penetration testing and all that. And it's just, it's. It's hilarious because, you know, when we attempted actually to purchase Cobalt Strike to use in our legitimate business. I remember you were denied. Um, they tortured us. Oh, yeah. They tortured us. And we had yeah. to go through lawyers and we had to we had to send like letters saying, yeah, we're going to use it for good and blah, blah, blah. And apparently we should have just stolen it and cracked it. I don't because right. that's how everybody else on the planet's using it. But whatever. Wow. So anyways, um, uh, Microsoft and the new owners of Cobalt Strike. um have gone to court and and finally got a ruling that yes they can now start taking down some of the domain names and IP addresses that are associated with um command and control callbacks. So when they see, you know, uh I don't know, when they see North Korea's, you know, servers with cobalt strike servers online, they can shut them down. Or or Iranian hackers maybe? Hacking Azure. Yep. Or Iranian hackers. Or, or Dwayne. <laughs> or me. Or me. No. We don't need right. we don't need that framework. So there's no call to action for the Cobalt Strike thing. No, it's just a, it's an interesting shift in the cybersecurity paradigm where, you know, it used to be, oh, there's no hackback. There's no hackback. But it but in this case it's yeah, we're giving legal dispensation for you to go and shut these sites down. Um so I think it's, you know, it's a shift in the right direction to allow for a little bit more of an offensive approach to shutting down, you know, 
illegitimate sites. And by when you said there's no hackback, hackback is you find somebody on in your system hacking you, mm -hmm. you see evidence of it, and then you hack them. Right. Hack back. Yeah. Re revenge hacking. It's revenge hacking. So the reason I said, uh, I, you know, as an example, Iranian hackers hacking Azure, because that's our next story. And this is a nation state hack. And maybe because it's nation state, maybe Patrick, you ought to take this story. Heck yeah. So if you understand the national, the international landscape, there's, there's several half a dozen really serious players. There's the West, which is kind of a unified block. Australia, England, France, Germany, the United States are allies. Yeah. And then there's the five eyes. Yeah. Yeah. The five eyes is a good start, but there's others involved in that. And then there's the other side, which is Russia and China, North Korea and Iran. Mm. And then there's everyone else in the middle who it's kind of an every man for himself. Right. So Microsoft and Microsoft's a big player. Microsoft, Google, um, all these big companies have teams. They actually caught and found evidence that the Iranian government had a had a advanced persistent threat team or APT and that they were behind the Azure wiping attack where we talked about this about a month ago there were attacks that were disguised as ransomware but really they were just destroying data yeah and so now Microsoft has um, clear indications that this was done by the Iranian government now what's the ramifications not much because mm. It's not like we have relations. It's not like we can't, we're going to sanction them further than we do. It's just part of the dull roar of the cyber war that's been going on. Um, attribution is really tough. That's the reason when we talked about Cobalt Strike, it's why we don't generally let people hack back because <clears throat> I can make it look like a school system hacked you and you might attack them. Yeah, right. It's interesting you say that um, attribution is hard because in this particular case, they go, oh, it was Iran, it was Iran, it was Iran. It's this group called uh, Muddy Water and, you know, blah, 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 whatever. And you go, okay, cool. How'd they figure that out? I mean, that's cool. And they said, oh, it's because they used a VPN that was used by Muddy Water previously. Uh, mm -hmm. It's like, oh, okay. <laughs> so, eh, could it, is it them? Probably, um, and and I would I would imagine they have more um, IOCs or indicators of compromise that tie them to the group, um, yeah. kind of like a, an MO, if you will. Yeah. Well, they also can't let it all out because then they'll change their signature. Right. Well, now they know to use a different VPN. Yeah. <laughs> no more Nord for you. It was a pretty wide hack, not just deleting data, but all sorts of destructive things. I'm looking at. I'm reading here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Yep. Wow. Yeah. So, needless to say, uh, yeah, the cyber war is still raging on. Well, you know, hopefully, Microsoft's got good backups. <laughs> oh yeah, I think so. Yeah, they they do okay. They do all right. I know all my websites are still running. I don't. Th I don't know that I'd ever want to see Microsoft in an offensive attack against me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Can you imagine? <laughs> no. I mean, honestly, they own like what eighty percent of all operating systems on the planet. Yeah. So that would be crushing if microsoft was like oh yeah we just want to shut this country down the, the next patch will just, just delete your data if, uh, if you're in the wrong place <laughs> screw it we're getting out of business and we're taking everybody down with us <laughs> exactly invent your own operating system have at it, uh, it what's interesting is it, that which does not kill you makes you stronger the, the, uh, while it's horrible joe nietzsche said that who joe nietzsche mm. Nietzsche. 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 Okay. Nietzsche. I, didn't, yeah. I didn't know Joe was his first name. That's okay. why it's funny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that like, is it. That's not his first name. <laughs> I thought Kanye West said it. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so ransomware has been a plague upon Western companies for a decade now. Uh -huh. But it's made security something they do now. We right. are in a far better protection posture with data and systems than we ever would have been if there hadn't been ransomware right i'm not saying i'm cheering on the answer ransomware but it has helped us and if you right. think about it if the if the bad guys really had their act together if they really knew what they were doing we wouldn't hear about ransomware until it was time for them to kill us all right mm. that's right because they would have released it suddenly everywhere all at once, and that would have been the, the digital digital apocalypse. Right. I don't think there's going to be one because I think they're so excited when they come up with a new tool, they can't they can't wait to release it. Well, and they you know they used it for money. I mean, that's yeah. Why would we Why would we destroy everything when we, what we really want is money? So let's go get some money. Yeah. Right. But it's it's the you know it's mostly in countries that are run by strongmen, mm. and so therefore they 
you know, they could have stamped it out and prevented it from becoming so widespread right. so that it was in reserve when they needed it, but they didn't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Missed opportunity. Patrick, that's going to be... That's going to be my next hacker group name is Digital Apocalypse or a band name. <laughs> Come on. That's pretty so, cool. I don't know. Pain. <laughs> <laughs> the digital you Apocalypse. You can do better than that. You could combine it into a portmento <laughs> like Digipocalypse. Ooh, it might be better. Ooh, I like uh, it. Yeah. All right. Wow. Anyway. So not really anything you can do here. Just be aware that uh, this happened mm-hmm. and, you know, things are happening. But um, this is a ransomware story. This next one from the Modesto B. Uh, yeah. In Modesto, California, a ransomware attack may cost Modesto, the town of Modesto, California, more than one million dollars for for expert help, better yes. IT security. So, is this how they're combating uh, ransomware by by hiring consultants? Yeah. So this one, this one's interesting. So, okay, uh, they had a ransomware attack. I mean, so devastating. The police department was taken offline. Um, mm, yeah. They still said they said they could answer nine one one calls, but still, it it was pretty pervasive. Um, so what they're what they're looking to do now is spend five hundred eighty six thousand dollars on quote unquote expert help, and mm. then four hundred ninety seven thousand dollars annually. <laughs> On security detection and prevention tools. Wow. So up to a million dollars this year. And, and their hope is that most of the expert advice, the $586,000, um, all but $100,000 of it, which is their deductible, will be paid by the cybersecurity insurance provider, which, yeah, good luck for them. Hmm. I've, I've found most cybersecurity insurance providers do not want to pay. No. And, you know, the, the most important question is, were they able to recover and they did but it took five weeks yeah five weeks for the whole town to come back online yeah that's a lot yikes well and yeah that's interesting too because when we talk to businesses about backup and recovery and disaster recovery plans from ransomware Mm. the first thing we we talk about is what's called rpo and rto Mm -hmm. like what is your recovery point objective rpo like uh am i going to be if i recover if we lost all of our data right now could I recover as of this morning, as of yesterday, as of the last week? That's the recovery point. How much data do you lose? Right. Mm. The recovery time objective is how long does it take me to get there? So if I say, listen, you only need to lose five minutes worth of time. That's my recovery point. But it's going to take nine months for me to get there. Well, that's my recovery time objective. Mm. So, you, so the first thing you ask in any backup disaster recovery plan is what's the RPO? What's the RTO? I, it has to be acceptable. And I can't imagine... That the, the, the state went through this process and said, okay, what's the RPR RTO? And their tech guys went, oh, it's five weeks yeah. for us to restore this stuff. Right. Right. That would be crazy. They'd be like, well, no, make it better. Like right. five weeks is insane. So that, that surprises me in this particular. Be like Star Trek. You got five hours. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> and then Jordy goes, I don't know, but it just might work. <laughs> I gotta do it. <laughs> you didn't tell him how long it would really take, did you? We could just <laughs> decouple the Heisenberg compensators and it just might work. The chances uh, are one in a million. And it always worked. Every and then time. Fizzabaza or whatever the hell you said there. What was it? Bing bong, zing zong, ding dong. What was the what was the term that you used? Dwayne? <laughs> what are you, I don't know. Our, Fubba's, the, fuzzy Duzzy? What did you say? And were you talking about herpaderping? Herpaderp. Yes. <laughs> and then herpaderp, the, just like that, herpaderp, the, herpaderp, the compensators are off, the compensators are offline. <laughs> bing bong, ding dong, uh, herpaderp. <laughs> you make it, it sound like not a real thing. I really bro. still don't know what it is. So, I, of course, it's not a real thing. I'm going to keep it mythical. We'll All talk right, about herpaderp later. Uh, so, sucks to be Modesto, you know. Back up everything and make sure your RPOs and RTOs, whatever those are, are are uh, low, right? Right. Yep. Yeah. Well, acceptable. acceptable. Acceptable is what you're going for. Yeah. Okay. So, do you remember the thing that we did about the garage doors? I think that was even last week. We did. I do. Dwayne wasn't yeah. with us. It was last oh. week. Oh. But I listened to you both. That's why yeah. it was such a good episode. <laughs> right. Oh, Wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Uh, herpa derp you and herpa derp you. Yeah, all you yeah. herpa derpas, just get back in your car. <laughs> herpa derp you and the horse you rode in on. Get away from my herpa derp and garage. <laughs> all right, so, so the, there's a. Yeah. I'm gonna air quote. Can I air quote on, an, Go on ahead. a podcast? I'm yeah, air sure. quoting. They they've got a 
fix, air quote. Uh, oh, What's oh. the fix? Well, let's just remind everybody what happened. So there was this smart garage door opener company, right? They have these smart I got to say smart. Yeah, we're, smart. We're abusing that word quite a bit. <laughs> smart garage door <laughs> openers, they're locks, right? And so they're vulnerable to hackers over the internet. And so, you know, this was the story we reported last week. And they came back with a fix mm-hmm. in air quotes. And what are the, what's the fix, Patrick? Don't use Wi-Fi. Or, no, don't use the internet. <laughs> don't use the internet. <laughs> just, just, just use. So, so the <laughs> Yeah, the turn it off. Of, a bunch of <laughs> so, 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 Carl, your knee is bothering you. The fix is to not walk. Don't walk. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah it's fine. <laughs> but, you know, what they're saying is use Bluetooth instead of Wi-Fi. That's what they're saying. Oh, my God. But they're basically saying don't use the main feature yeah. for the reason you would probably buy this thing. Exactly. Right, right. <laughs> yeah, exactly. This thing was connectable over the internet, so you could open your garage. I don't know maybe a block away, or you could check to see if your garage was closed, if you were gone. And now, instead, you got to, uh, I don't know, be close enough where you could see it's closed, and then you can check. Oh, my God, that's crazy. Well, uh... Yeah. I mean, maybe they'll fix it at some point, and maybe (laughs) Maybe. you'll be able to patch it. I don't know. But still, that's just frustrating. I can imagine as a customer, I'd be ticked off. Yeah. Bunch of herpaderps. All right. (laughs) Herpaderps. We're going to take a quick break, and we'll be right back. Don't you go away. Welcome back. You're listening to Security This Week. I'm Carl Frankel, and that's Dwayne LaFlade and Patrick Hines, the brains of this here operation. And, uh, yeah, we only have, um, only, only four more stories. I know. I geez. think, or is it five? It's no, it's five week. more. That, that's a busy week. All Wait, hold on. Tone. I'm gone for a week, and then there's a ton of stories. Yeah, mm. I know. What's, I think you were hacking that. What's mm. up with that? I might have been busy last week. I think you just incriminated yourself. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's talk JavaScript and VM2. What's a VM2? Uh, so VM2 is a, san- a Java sandboxing module. So lots of times you want... Java or JavaScript? JavaScript, sorry. Um, okay. So lots of times you want your JavaScript to run in a sandbox. You don't. You want a particular functionality to work, but you don't want it to reach out, say, to the hard drive. Right. Um, so for example, your browser does this automatically. Okay. Um, when you go and, you know, go to a website and it has JavaScript on it that does whatever, pops up text or whatever, whatever you have the JavaScript doing, it's running in the sandbox of the browser. So it doesn't have access to read your hard drive. It doesn't have right. access to read files on your hard drive, that sort of stuff. Or a write. To your hard drive. Right. So it's safe. Or right to your hard drive. Yeah. So super important that sandboxes or sandboxes for a reason. They stay, everything in there stays isolated. Um, right. So VM2 is a very popular, and when I say very popular, 4 million downloads oh. a week. Is Holy that what I saw? Anna. I think it was 4 million downloads a week. I mean, it's popular. Uh, it, properly, and it's used in a lot of different packages. Seven hundred and twenty-one packages. Wow. Uh, yeah, four million weekly downloads and used in seven hundred and twenty-one packages. So it's wow. it's large. Um, so if you're using a any one of the seven hundred twenty-one packages that use VM two, um, or if you're using it in your own uh libraries, um, very popular in Node.js environments, there is a critical bug. Uh, CVSS score of 10. Oh my god. That's What? That's the 10? worst. That's uh digital apocalypse. Is Maximum that Maximum <laughs> security level digipocalypse. <laughs> digipocalypse. They should only allow a 10 if it infects systems that don't have the software installed or if it kills humans touching exactly. the keyboard. Oh my god. <laughs> <Exactly>. Yeah. <laughs> so needless to say it's it's important uh if you're running any of that you definitely want to go and uh, go out there and patch. There is a patch for it. That does fix this particular issue, but you can imagine that that bad guys are going to make hay with this thing while they can. Um, Good because, God, man! Uh, it's pretty important. Yeah. So it can lead to bypassing sandbox protect. <laughs> <laughs> protect. Sure can. Yeah, <laughs> and it can allow some execution. You don't want that. No. You don't want no, that. Sir. No. No, so, sir. So the exploit code is available and I guess is there a patch? 
Uh, there is. Yeah, yeah, you can go out and patch. Um, just so make sure if you're using it in any of your own repos or, or development or in your own Node.js projects, just make sure you're 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 always keeping up to date and with any third party libraries you're using. And you have to be using the latest. It says there is no workaround for older versions. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm. yeah. If you're using older versions, you're SOL. All right. So, there you have it. Hey, you know what? It's been a while since the iPhone uh, was in the news in terms of being um, compromised, but apparently it was. Yeah, yeah. I, you know, I, I actually, I really love the zero day, zero click. Like they're awesome, uh, impressive. Zero click meaning you don't have to do anything in order for you to get hacked. Yeah, right? and this one's this one's neat because it's a. Uh, so in this particular, um, what they're dubbing King's Pawn uh, attack, yeah, um, somebody can send you an invite, a calendar invite that exploits a zero day uh, on the, the phone so that they can put surveillance software and all that other good stuff. But when they send the calendar invite, if they're sending it for a date that's in the past, so your phone doesn't display it to you. Like normally if somebody sends you a calendar invite, it pops up on your phone and you have to right. click OK or whatever. But if right. they send it in the past, the phone goes, oh, it's already happened. I'm just going to process it and get rid of it. Um, and because they're exploiting a, a zero day in there, that's that's kind of the crux of how this happens. Wow. Wow. So it's cool stuff. Now that's – it's it's patched now though, right? Uh, so it is patched. It is patched. There is an iOS patch for it. Um, but what's what's more kind of interesting in this particular case – is the fact that uh, Apple was like, eh. Yeah, right. Like, listen, do you know how expensive these zero days are? And <laughs> do you know how rarely they're used? And do you know, because they're so expensive and they're so hard and they have such a short shelf life when you start using them, unless you're a dignitary, a president of a large country, or wow. someone that you know has control of nuclear codes, you're probably not a target. So their advice was to the normal human, you're not important enough for someone to blow this <laughs> exploit on <laughs> yeah, you. No. Uh, there's probably 10 people on the planet that are. Jeez. Um, so I guess that's consoling somehow. Yeah. Well, I mean, if there's a patch, that's the most important well, thing. It's it's their decision is the problem. They made it, you know, companies don't do, typically do well when it's found out they made a unilateral decision. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Hey, by the, this reminds me of a message that I got on Mastodon. By the way, you can follow me on Mastodon at carlfranklin at techhub.social. And this is from Stu. And Stu says, I'm absolutely loving the Security This Week podcast. Listen twice each weekend just to take it all in. I'd love a refresher on why the guys say it's so important to shut down PCs every night and phones at least once a week. Ah. Guess I really didn't take that in, did I? Any links or info you can share? And basically my reply was, um, you you want to make sure that all patches get applied and that you yes. know you don't have anything hanging out in memory that can do damage. That yeah, that's the key part right there, Carl. Um, so there's a lot of exploit processes, um, uh, especially things like herpa derping. <laughs> that what happens is yeah, that really is a real thing. It is. It is. So okay, I'm gonna I'll give a quick primer on herpa derping. Let's say we write a piece of malware. I almost don't want to know. I know. Let's say we write a piece of malware and we want to avoid antivirus. We want antivirus not to see it. Okay. So what happens is when an executable runs, it gets moved up into memory and it gets mapped into memory. Now, if I then go and modify the image on disk, antivirus is going to look at the image in memory and say, oh, it looks cool. Uh Then when the image in memory reaches down to disk to grab functions it hasn't loaded yet, it's going to load functions that are malicious. So what, so herpa derping is you sort of severing the image that's in memory from the image that's on disk and putting the malicious stuff on disk so it can run but not get detected in short. All right. Now, why is it called herpa derping? I have no idea. (laughs) I mean, honestly, <laughs> if you take our tools, when I talk, like I'm sometimes on a conference call or whatever, my kids will come up and they'll be like, you made up 90% of those terms. I'll be like, all right, listen, so when we break into this organization, we're going to do, we're going to use a ping castle first, and then we're going to fire off a, a quick bloodhound. <laughs> what from kid there, wouldn't be pro- interested in that? Right. <laughs> well, from there, what we're probably going to do is it just a coercer so that we can move them over <laughs> into the cert server. And from there, we're going <laughs> to, we're going to use a uh, Rubius. Hagrid, so that we can then grab a TGT and boom, we're done. So your, your like, wife doesn't ask you at the up. dinner table, what did you do today, honey? She doesn't <laughs> ask you that, right? No. Mostly That's just herpa derping. A little herpa yeah, derping, exactly. some <laughs> castle pinging and whatever that. Yeah. 
Yeah. Oh my. All right. So, so anyway. So so now I know. Okay. Herpaderpy. No. So that. So one of the reasons. So I'm coming back to the to our listener here. Yeah. I mean, one of the reasons you want to reboot is there's a lot of really um, interesting exploits that I can do that stay resonant in memory, so I can avoid antivirus. Right. When you reboot, they go away. Right. So there have been plenty of companies that we've breached uh, in memory, but if they were of just rebooted computers, so, it would have been hard for us to stay persistent. So imagine as a hacker. You get somebody to do something that gives you a foothold. Right. Mm -hmm. And you're waiting for them to do the next thing that will allow you to get to the the payload, allow you to do the next thing. If I reboot, I I swipe them away. You reset it. Yeah. Yeah. I reset the clock. So I shut down every day. Good. Yep. All right. It's a good idea. Great question, though. Honestly. I'll be right back. I'm going to shut down now. (laughs) Boop, boop. <laughs> no, that's okay, Carl. We'll do it for you. Ah, uh, yeah, great, great. Well, you guys can't do it. <laughs> and there he uh, goes. All right, so anyway, he's gone. HashiCorp vault HashiCorp. vulnerability could lead to uh, remote RCE. This one frustrates frustrates the hell out of me. Okay, so here's the deal. HashiCorp Vault is uh it's a vault for secrets. Where would you keep secrets? You keep them in your vault. Um so there's all sorts of like either API keys and that sort of stuff that a developer or someone who needs access to an API might keep right. these secrets in a vault. Great. Um the problem is this particular vault is also susceptible to <gasps> SQL injection. Um our old friend. It's how long has SQL injection been around? Yeah. Like twenty years? I think I think it was one of the Ten Commandments. I'm almost positive. <laughs> Etched in stone was the thou shalt not thou shalt have SQL arise. injection. <laughs> the, the, yeah, exactly. thou shalt not s- like, concatenate input strings together. Oh my God. How are we still in 2023 susceptible to things like SQL injection? It just blows my mind. But anyway. I thought Bobby Tables was all grown up and here he oh. is rearing his ugly head again. <laughs> Right. Uh, so needless to say, this is a SQL injection attack, um, and it gives you the ability to then pull all those magical secrets out and potentially get a remote code execution vulnerability. Right. Which so patch, is frustrating. Patch, but, patch, patch. Yes, patch. They've quote unquote fixed it. I'm sure they've done something. Um, I, you know, I can tell you there are old packages of software I've audited recently, recently for customers oh. um, that have SQL injection in them. Um, and when looking at the tens of thousands of lines of code to to fix them all is nigh impossible so you know i hope they've done a great job but it's it's definitely something i would worry about well patrick sir we know about florida man what's the difference between florida man and massachusetts man um <laughs> it's not wrestling so a dangerous. gator <laughs> so so florida man is basically that you can get all these crazy headlines man wrestles alligator the florida man lobby, uh, things like yeah, that. yeah right uh, and that's because Florida be crazy. But the other thing is <laughs> that Florida has a law that says that basically all the blotter information is open to the journalists right. and, and there's just, it's just open gates. In this case, uh, you're talking about the guy, uh, the leaks of all that information. Uh, and I, I really summarized. I thought, you know, the Russians, I can't believe they still have a mole that deep. First of all, let's talk about the leaks. Yeah. Yeah. So, Hundreds of documents coming out of basically the Pentagon right. is what the way it appeared. Slides, assessments, yeah, uh, in, sources of information, uh, very damaging stuff. Stuff, stuff about the U.S. spying on its allies. Oh yes. yeah, we're oh, in yep, there. Okay. Let's let's not let's what? not do too much pearl clutching because well, they're spying know. on us too. <laughs> Pearl clutching. Well, no, no, no. I'm just saying there's... <gasps> oh, my God. Some of it was very <laughs> obvious, like, you know, the... <laughs> some of it was very obvious, like, you know, Ukraine's plans that Russia already knows and all of these things. Oh, but, yeah. But yeah. it was tons and tons of uh, of data. So, whereas Florida man takes an alligator into a 7-Eleven and holds <laughs> up the guy for a, a carton of cigarettes, uh, Massachusetts man leaks these documents yes oh my god yeah so but but for similarly stupid reasons so this Mm -hmm. was a 20 something military member i believe who was just trying to impress a bunch of kids in a in a freaking chat room Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. in a discord channel that he thought was safe enough that he could share this stuff without it getting out he did it for months and months 
And he did it just so he could be cool. Well, now he'll be the coolest. Well, probably not the coolest in the cell block because he's going to hard labor. Mm. Um, hard labor. Hard, hard labor. He's going to hard labor. Yeah. But it's, Wicked. I really thought that there was a, I, I was like, I was impressed that the Russians still had a spy this deep that we hadn't rooted out. But no, it's just our own stupidity. It's a self goal. It's an, it's our own. We <laughs> owned ourselves. Self goal. <laughs> it's a self goal. Well, you know, it's. Hey, I can't comment. I have a, I have a Russian sympathizer in the neighborhood that the FBI well, I descended think they carted on. They carted him so. away, right? He's not uh, still in no, the neighborhood. No, he's still here. He's still what? here. Yeah, he's on bail. He's awaiting trial. I think Dwayne really oh, does live in the people. Nexus. I think I do. I think I do. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. Uh, it's not like this happens in Massachusetts all the time. No. No, it doesn't. No. No. But, you know. But, uh, yeah, he's, he's done. I mean, he's going to be, he'll do some time, I'm sure. We don't, we really don't put people away and throw away the key for this kind of crime. Uh, because while they can, you know, if they're, if it's, if they're taking money from a foreign government, it's not necessarily, tre- it's not treason unless it's time of war. So there's a lot of intricacies of it, but we normally eventually pardon these people after they do five to 10 years. Um, mm. Why? I don't think we should, but. <laughs> but yeah. uh, that gets into a different area. All right. So from Florida man to Massachusetts man to the FTX guy, who's the biggest oh dope? Oh, my God. Who's the biggest dope? I heard he was a genius. Yeah. Well, I think, honestly, the guy in Massachusetts is a bigger dope because he didn't make any money off of this. Oh, okay. So let's talk about I, FTX's uh, cybersecurity. Hey, yeah, I love this. I love this. Okay, guys, the three of us, we're going to start a crypto exchange. It's going to hold billions of dollars. We're going to be playing around with world finances. You know what we should not pay for? Security? Uh, (laughs) Cybersecurity. Like, who would start? Like, if I started a corner bakery at this point, I might have at least a neighborhood kid who knows something about patching and cybersecurity. Um, well, every genus says that cybersecurity is for suckers. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> the losers. <laughs> <laughs> so that's, the, that's the, uh, the headline of this Gizmodo article is just awesome. It says FTX's cybersecurity was hilariously bad. Not even just bad. Right. Hilariously bad. Like, so like password one, two, three with an exclamation is- mark. I mean, and, and it goes to show, um, you know, the, the company actually, when they filed chapter 11, I think it was the next day, uh, they said $432 million worth of assets were stolen in a cyber attack because it wasn't hard to break in. <laughs> yeah. Because the guy wanted to steal it. Well, and the guy, once he got caught, he wanted it all stolen. So he could right. say, Oh, they must have stolen three billion. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. I and I you know what I always wonder like is he a genius for not having cybersecurity or people or adult right where he goes listen I don't know they could have planted shit there listen I don't know they all those assets were stolen I'd love to give them back if I could but I can't they're, they're not mine anymore like I don't know maybe maybe he's uh he's an evil genius who knows uh, probably not I don't think so I think you're he's half probably, right he's, he's probably an idiot yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think that's well established now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that blew my mind though. Just I, I can't imagine starting a uh, even a small to medium business without somebody who knows IT and cybersecurity. Well, Mount Gox was one of the first exchanges and it got hacked and they took took all the resources. This is actually a, a story that we've seen before. It's just they didn't learn the lesson. You'd think that that this many years on with this many examples, they would have learned the lesson. Right. So the FTX group had no independent chief information security officer, just, wow. no employee with appropriate training or experience tasked with fulfilling the responsibility of such a role and no established processes for assessing cyber risk, implementing security controls, or responding to cyber incidents in real time, as with critical controls in other areas, the FTX group grossly deprioritized and ignored cybersecurity controls, a remarkable fact, given that, in essence, the FTX group's entire business, its assets, infrastructure, and intellectual property consisted of computer code and technology. And by the way, tens of billions of dollars that they were trying to protect with no security. I I just Boggles I don't even know the what mind. to say. Egregious. 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 That's all I can say. Egregious. Absolutely. Now I'm angry. 
I want a right? pizza. <laughs> Ooh, pizza sounds good. Pizza does sound good. All right, guys. Go get a pizza and make sure it's wicked awesome. Wicked awesome. Wicked awesome pizza. Thank you. And uh, we'll see you next week. See you later. Bye. 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 Bye.